line with me, I got Harry Hubbard, who's a wealth of knowledge on a lot of different subjects. And, uh, man, I'm excited to talk to him. And, and, and with that said, Harry, um, surprise me. What are we going to talk about tonight? We can take it any direction you want. The new stuff I'm working on, I watched one of my videos that was cut back in 1998 called Aliens from the Lost Tomb. And it was not recorded well. It, I did it in Chicago, 19, I think June of 98. And it was real windy. Everybody there had a bad hair day. And, and it was not clear. A lot of it was dark, blurry. And I said, man, I've got so many more pictures now of these aliens, these spaceships, you know, from ancient times that, that are carved on these stones. Because uh, in 98, I didn't have near, near as many photographs of artifacts that I have now. And I said, man, I'm just going to do an addendum because I did an addendum. So I'm going to do an addendum to that video and just show a lot more artifacts. And, and they'll be a lot more clear. People can enjoy them. And, and uh, all of the stuff comes from right here, southern Illinois, Marion County. And uh, just strange animals, strange people that I don't have a clue who they are, what they are. And I'm just going to put it out there. And, uh, and, and, um, and let people see it and make their own opinions. And, and I'm just, I'm concerned, uh, because as I started doing this, I was noticing that I had just so many nice pictures of artifacts, uh, digital and, and photograph. And I decided, well, I've got to do more videos of artifacts and I'm just going to start putting them together. Um, elephants, people, warriors. I did a, an Egyptian series recently, well, about a year ago maybe a little over a year ago, and I did a 10-part series. I cut them up into short um, time spans, and, and so, did 10. And so when and you're, when, I, you're I, I want to do more. When you're talking Egyptian, you're talking about Egyptian stuff's over here in the Americas, right? Right, yeah, and, and you have a big following on that. You know, you're talking, uh, I did a 10-video a ten, a ten series on Egyptian artifacts found right here in Marion County. So, so let me let me stop you there. So, how, because you do have a lot of information on your tu YouTube channel. So, for people that want to go see that, how what what's your YouTube channel name? It's um, Harry Hubbard or Illinois Caves. You can uh, um, go and, and see the Egyptian series. I I, uh, I made a playlist, and I still haven't gotten my playlist together like they should be, but. Uh, you can go and 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 see all kinds of Egyptian artifacts. And I and I know that the stuff that you've got videos out on now on your YouTube channel that people can go see for free. I know, man. Clear back in the early two thousands, I bought that series from you. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it was so fascinating that I bought that like a ten DVD series, or I can't even remember how many it was, but I bought that from you and I got that, and so people can see that same stuff for free on your YouTube channel. That's fascinating stuff. Well, back then, I didn't have as much information as I do now ah. and, and the ability to cut more stuff. I mean, back in the, the early 2000s, I was selling, after I uh, worked, I, was, I started working at the recording studio down in Georgia, I was transferring all my VHS tapes to DVD. And, 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 and people wanted to buy them. They wanted to see more about what was going on, so I had them available. And uh, uh, you had purchased them. Some other people, uh, several people in Utah, purchased them. And and uh, uh, just after a period of time, uh, after I got uh, acclimated more to YouTube, and I put several of those DVDs online. Uh, I pretty much think uh, I had what ten, ten or twelve. DVDs now there's over a hundred. Oh wow! Online now they're not all they're not all uh, um, Illinois tomb slash Burroughs cave artifacts. I got a, I'm all over the place. I do ancient coins, currencies. I did a series called Severity of the Scarcity, which is pretty much for people who who buy and stack gold and silver pieces and such. And because uh, uh, I'm not new at this, I was I was buying gold back in the early nineties. Now you get people that just started and think that they're experts at physics, but I've seen the, the trends go up and down and all around, and, and so, but I still do have dozens and dozens more of artifacts from this 
tomb here in Marion County. And there's going to be, like I say, dozens and dozens more. I'm going to start buckling down. I said, we yeah, are kind of taking a break from making videos and uh, hoping to get some better gear. But I've got just so many gigs of information that I need to share with other people. And maybe somebody will come up and say, hey, man, where is this stuff? You know, I want to buy the property. I want to get moving on this. And and uh, this is too, too important to sweep under the carpet. And I just want to add that I've got all kinds of archaeology books, ancient culture books, on and on and on. And there is no archaeological site, no ancient ruin site anywhere in the world that has more documentation, more artifacts, more language scripted tablets. I mean, we're talking uh, the library at Nippur, Ur, Nineveh. They, they, they pale in comparison to what was found right here, just about four miles from where I'm sitting. So, so Ben's, we're kind of going on this this direction. I, I want to talk more of, about this because I know that you're kind of, you and Paul are the leading authorities on this, done all kinds of research, gathered all kinds of information from way back when uh, this stuff right. would start being found. So, so tell us a little bit more about um, this cavern, this tomb, what was found in there, who who you think it, who you think it is, because I know you and Paul deciphered, you know, a lot of these tablets, and it, and it tells a fascinating story, so, man, let's dive into that. Okay, well, uh, we started in, uh, I, I bought the first Burroughs Cave book, I believe in 1991, from David Hatcher Childress, and I had seen other books that had talked about it and, and such, and and it was uh, David Hatcher Childress that, that uh, steered me in the right direction. He purchased some other books, and and he, he hooked me up with Joe Mahan and and uh, you know some of the stuff there. And he thought it was all legit, and that was all I needed to know. I, David Hatcher Childress is a, is a Renaissance man. Yeah, I agree with you. He... And he's he's a, a there's a lot of ancient ruins, a lot of sites that would have not been brought into this next century had he not done it. And so, given that, I had the books, and and Paul and I had cut a, a, our, our map video in 94, and, and I had had the books a couple of years, and Paul took a, a, look, a second look at it, and he made, he started making the decipherments. Uh, the, the language was uh, archaic Latin for the most part. It had archaic Phoenician characters. There were uh, there was a ton of Egyptian glyph, uh, all kinds of Greek characters, demonic characters, and the scholars were pulling their hair out. And um, people like Barry Fell were saying this is fake. Uh, some other people were saying it was because they couldn't read it. That's uh, a lot of guys. If they can't read it, they say it's fake. Even though they may be looking at it, it, it might be written from right to left, and they're trying to read it from left to right. That was a big problem. Huh. There are several people, and I, I mean, I mean, through the years, uh, Victor Couture, Beverly Mosley, um, John White. I mean, these these names go. I mean, a lot of these people have passed on, but they're they're uh, they're names that are familiar to you because you've been doing this for decades. Uh-huh. And so, but um, the 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 stones as they started being deciphered told the tale of one of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Uh, with their, their missing son from history, Alexander Helios. He sailed over here with an armada and brought the corpses of his ancestors. Alexander the Great, all the Ptolemaic dynasty, including Queen of Queens Cleopatra, mm. or Cleopatra is her name on these tablets, Cleopatra. It's not Cleopatra, it's Cleopatra. And you can see uh, 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 people say, oh, uh, some people say, oh, Alexander the Great and Cleopatra, they lived 300 years apart. They don't understand that Alexander the Great was interred in Alexandria, and Ptolemy Soter I was Alexander's half-brother, and and they, they that was the, the, the dynasty, the Ptolemaic dynasty, um, and they don't get it. They, they didn't study their history. There's a lot of problem with alleged scholars not reading the material. And that's why there were so many languages. That's why they were calling it bogus, is because there were so many different kinds of script. So we kind of call it Mediterranean script. I mean, from all around, from Italy, 
all the way over to, uh, 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 um, you know, Sidon and Tyre and down into uh, Alexandria and then back across Libya. Numidian, Berber, uh, there's so many ancient languages, dead languages. So why would somebody risk carving a fake stone in a dead language with the correct syntax? That's what gives it away. That's uh-huh. what gives the, uh, the fakers away is that uh, the syntax. In other words, how the words are put together to create a thought process for the person attempting to read or study what is left. And, and uh, um, like, Hebrew, for instance. Hebrew was never a spoken language before, like, 700 A.D. And when it came on the scene, Hebrew as this language, as a spoken, written language, had a Latin syntax. It's not even a Semitic syntax. Semitic syntax is like uh, Punic or Aramaic or even Egyptian culture, Akkad, uh, cuneiform. Um, they, have, <clears throat> they have a very strange word order. And like with Egyptian hieroglyph, for instance, if, if the guy carving it forgot a word or, or the next day his supervisor came in and said, uh, I want you to put this word in there, he can put it in there anywhere, and then you got to figure out where it fits. The guy yeah. reads it later. Yeah, it's, later. He's got to figure out where it fits. Then. Yeah, this is, this is, these are carved in stone. It's not like it's on a piece of paper and you <laughs> erase it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the and, uh, same thing, uh, 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 you know, and in, in, in doing so, in studying these ancient languages, Paul and I were the first people to call bogus on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Really? And we did that, first of all, like in 1996. We, we figured, wow, wow, man, these are, these are fake. These are fake. And we made it public in 1997 that the Dead Sea Scrolls were bogus. So, and so... it's all got a Latin syntax, and it's all double-spaced, and it's all no blotches, no ink marks, no no mistakes. <laughs> so that's that's interesting to me and I want you to do a an interview on just that then. That sounds interesting, so <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. That's old hat. That's old hat. And and uh and and then Paul did a follow up to the Dead Sea Scrolls. I did one, he did another. And uh, we show different scripted tablets and, and, and parchments from ancient times where they where something like you, you'll know what a bazooka bubblegum wrapper is uh-huh, I mean yeah. a lot of people may not but a, a, a piece of paper or a piece of parchment the size of a bazooka bubblegum wrapper would be a love letter and the words and the letters would be so close together no wasted space at all and and, um, and the Dead Sea Scrolls were just double spaced perfect Perfect grammar, perfect Latin syntax, perfect prefixes and suffixes, and we're like, oh wait a second, wait a second, that didn't exist in <laughs> zero BC or two hundred BC. It didn't exist, and it was written on. They were written on uh, sheepskin and goatskin. That didn't even happen. That didn't even happen until like eleven hundred AD. Huh? So it was obvious that they were just, that they were bogus. We 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 had it down, and and even the way that um, that we fell into it. Because I had all kinds of books from Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Russia that you couldn't get here. There was a there was a ban on Dead Sea Scrolls information here in here in America. Really? You could not get the script. Yeah, back in the nineties, you couldn't get it, and it was because the they uh, I, I suppose uh, uh, Herschel Shanks, uh, Biblical Archaeology Review, the people making money off of it, figured out that well if if, uh, if if Harry and Paul come along, they're going to figure out that they're all written in the same hand. And that's what it was, is uh, Dr. John Strugnell, he figured that he was a handwriting expert. And they were all the Dead Sea Scrolls are written by the same person. Huh. What are the chances of that happening? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, and, and then you have, uh, oh, it must have been the Essenes, the Essenes. Josephus talks about the No, no, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one Essene. <laughs> there's only one. And then we can, you know, uh, move on that later. I mean, I can go about the, the, the settlement there at Qumran, where they supposedly came from, and all the all the stuff. But we, we did a, a follow-up. I did a, an addendum to it. It's on. It's in the addendum series. I think it's addendum three. It's either addendum three or addendum four, where Paul and I, I'm talking about the Book of Enoch, Josephus, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, and how they're all 
just bogus. They're all just bogus. Wild, wildly bogus. But people fall for it. So, people so, people so love a saying, lie. A lie is served on the table before the truth rings the doorbell. You know? So you're saying Josephus is, is, is bogus too? Well, all you got to do is read the preface and the introduction. Huh. Yeah, of course. The, the preface and the, and, the, and the introduction tells you that it's bogus. Really? So, so it's not my, yeah. People don't read the introductions and the preface of the books anymore, you know. Uh, they just want to jump in. Yeah, but uh, Josephus is absolutely horrendously flawed. Huh. And then you, and then, and then you got to go into Josephon, too. See, Josephus goes hand in hand with Josephon. Now, Josephon's probably one that you, uh, a new one on you. It is. But I don't you, know that. You, yeah, and, and I show you, you'll know everything about Josephon, everything about Josephus, everything. I can't remember exactly. Let me see. Hang on here one second. I'll tell you. Um, what is what what video that is that I cover those? Yeah, yeah. All you got to do is just read the read the preface and the introduction. They tell you right there. <laughs> it's all focus. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of people really really go into it. What is that? Addendum four. Uh, yeah, it's addendum three. Enoch, Josephus, and the Emerald Tablets. I cover the Emerald Tablets. So Are you familiar with the Emerald Tablet? Yeah, so they're fake too. <laughs> well, they only exist online. Oh, okay. They only exist online. Nobody's got them. Nobody has. And I don't know how how much you've uh, uh, dealt with uh, minerals and rock specimens and such, but not nothing like you. You got one heck. I've seen your videos. You got one heck of a collection, and and not nothing like you. <laughs> well, uh, who's going to carve? A letter or any kind of script on an emerald on on emerald period. That is some tough stuff. I mean, you're not going to. The only way you're going to scratch any kind of letters on emerald is with diamond or sapphire or ruby. It's just. I mean, emerald is just tough, tough stuff. It's pearl, uh, aquamarine pearl. Um, it just. Um, you know, there's nobody, nobody that's going to be able to write anything on an emerald, and it's very. In other words, you start writing something or scratching on emerald, it shatters everywhere. I mean, even if you're in, in, in the best of circumstances, it's just impossible. Ah. And, and they just popped up on the scene. But I predicted years ago that more emerald tablets were going to be surfacing. And sure enough, my, my prediction came true. Yeah, now they got like three of them, three or four. And, and be expecting some more. As much as they, and they, they, there's this one guy that gives talks about them. He shows the pictures. He da 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 da, da and nobody actually has a picture of the actual tablets. The tablets do not exist. Wow, they do not exist anywhere. So anywhere. that's 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 what I like you about you, Harry. Is you you tell it how it is. You know, um, if 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 it's if you think there's truth to it, you tell it. If you think there's no truth to it, you tell it. <laughs> well. Yeah, and circling back, Harry, circle back um, to the tomb here, is all of the tablets have the correct ancient type of syntax. Uh, the, 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 the words, the letters that repeat are the same phonetic sound. Uh, the, the, the script is read from right to left, left to right, up to down, down to up, all over the place. And and it's um it's noun verb noun verb noun verb like it used to be in the ancient times, and and that's that's what you have to look for is is how in the world did people put thoughts together? I mean, the carving on a stone, like you said, like we were talking earlier, it's not like you can just turn the pencil upside down and erase it. <laughs> so so. You know, how, how many artifacts of these, these stone tablets do you think came out of this cave or this tomb? Uh, I've got... I have probably... 12 to 1,500 pictures of different artifacts. And I would say there's over twice that many more. I, I would say probably 4,000. Uh, Burroughs t talked about that there were between three and 4,000. He said 3,500. One time he said 4,100, and I believe it. I'd say probably around 4,000. We don't know because we don't know all of the people who collected stuff. There's there's collections in uh, in uh, 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 in Utah. Well, uh, uh, 
who's this guy? What's that guy? I was just looking at his film. Uh, Richard, Richard Newton? Newton? I don't you know, know him? him. I don't know him. You, these these uh, all these tablets, you know, that came out of this this uh, tomb, you know, thirty five hundred, forty one hundred tablets. Was there a general? Um, what do I want to say? Was it, was there a general theme to these, or did they just bounced all over the place? Was it a history uh, of what went on? What? Yes. Uh, greetings cards. Um, birthday cards, uh, love le- love stuff, uh, battle arrangements, um, um, statistical numbers, land uh, map, uh, mi- maps of the Mississippi and the Ohio, uh, um, games, um, animals, elephants, leopards, lions, dogs, Egyptian hounds, uh, uh, space aliens, um, uh, marble statues two feet tall, dozens of them. Weird animals that are extinct, um, elephants, lions, monkeys, um, Afrocentric ancient uh, um, people, uh, lots of warriors, lots of uh, uh, dignitaries all over the place, all over. And that's why I'm sitting there looking at this going, man, these, the, the public needs to see more of this. We, I've been sitting on this information uh, hoping that, uh, uh, that something would happen with the property. Uh, the guy that owns it wants a million dollars for, or he did wants a million dollars for it, and and it is a plethora. I mean, all these wealthy, wealthy people that own land all over the country or all over the world. What's 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 the, your your most valuable piece of property? What a skyscraper or an apartment building? Well, how about an ancient Egyptian tomb sitting in uh, Marion County, Illinois? Yeah. Uh, what was that worth? Billions. Yeah. You know, and you can pick it up cheap. And and um and uh, so that anyway that that's kind of it is all over the place. Um, history tablets, uh, zoology tablets, talks about animals, um, mating practices, um, rituals, all kinds of religious rituals. Um, so just, so was in, 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 in different languages. I like the 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 Egyptian series I did. I cover so many. I'll cover. I cover all of these subjects that I just 
related to you just in the Egyptian language and the Egyptian uh, 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 um, scheme, the, the Egyptian scheme. And that's just one. Egyptian is just one. Mediterranean, Roman, all kinds of Roman stuff. Uh, marble pieces, um, diorites. Um, just fascinating, fascinating. Uh, there, there's um, some comical stuff. There's, uh, there's uh, some crude stuff. But most of it is just really pristine. Um, Lavagna, the, the, the Black Rock, Lavagna, and also marble. Lots of marble. Huh. And and then big statues. I mean, there's a there's a sandstone eagle that's that's like two and a half feet tall. I've got an artifact in my shop right now, Mega Head. He's for sale, and he weighs like 150 pounds. Really? 160 pounds. Yeah, I, I, that's why he's there. Because when we put it there back in 2013, I've had no help to get it back into town. It's just so damn heavy. <laughs> so, so. so. You know this, this. So was this a, a tomb where they put all this stuff, or was this kind of a a? I mean, why do you think they put all these things? It's just a central gathering places. You write a love letter. You do. It, it all ends up in this library or 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 or, or tomb or. or uh, we don't have all the answers. They all of the stuff that came out of there. Um, evidently, when Helios uh, 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 brought this stuff over here. He had help from his brother-in-law, King Yuba the Second, because his sister, Selene, his twin sister, was married to King Yuba the Second, and and that's what the tablets are all about. It's the journey over here, the people they met here, uh, the battles they fought here, on and on and on. And why everything is in there, we don't know. There's still a whole lot more to be to be learned, and that is why we are always trying to get more pictures of artifacts from like um, people like you who may have taken pictures of artifacts 10 years ago 20 years ago whatever 30 years and ago so that we yeah can put more <laughs> of the pieces together yep so so then you're saying they wasn't necessarily made here they 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 came over on their voyage when they came here a lot of them were the good 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 thing a lot of them were made here um, a lot of them uh, were made here. Uh, the maps of the Mississippi and the Ohio rivers, Missouri River, Illinois rivers, uh, um, those were made here. All the stones that have uh, uh, like wolverines, uh, the bears, um, um, let's see, uh, the rattlesnakes were made here. The cobras come from over there, but the rattlesnakes come from here. So these... And, there's just bunches, a bunch of rattlesnakes, a bunch of cobras, and that's, I did a video, Cobras of Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long video, but I show a bunch of artifacts. <laughs> Colum cobras of Columbus is a classic. So, I, so, you know, you say that they brought over, um, you know, their their ancestry, ancestors, you know, their burial, their their bodies, you know, and they brought them over this way. Do you think? Or does anything say that they knew where they was coming, or they just loaded everything on a ship and, and sailed off and hoped they found someplace? Or did did they already have, you know, you're saying maps of the Mississippi and, and, and that, did they already have these maps and they was already going to a certain spot, or or was it just happen chance? They got... I think probably a little both. Now, I cover that in the uh, in the Egyptian series uh, because they, 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 the bodies are laid out on, on the buyers and they are on the boats. The journey is well documented. And, and I believe what they, uh, that they did know about the Mississippi and the Ohio, what they did was they came up the Mississippi River and then at the confluence of the Ohio, they, they, they went eastward up the Ohio, then they went northward up the Wabash, and then they went up the, uh, the Little Wabash, River and then the Skillet Fork, and that and then they 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 uh, they peeled off into the Lick Branch, and that's where they that's where they put the, put this tomb. There's several of the, of the uh, of the artifacts that actually list right here where I'm at. Hmm. They actually it's actually carved on these ancient stones right here where I'm at, and these are stones that that we had no idea even existed. We knew when when Burroughs started lying to us and and and. And Patty 
using his lies and his story and everything, we said, well, hey, man, sooner or later, the artifacts themselves will tell us where this is all at. The, the artifacts are going to bust birth because he doesn't know it. He can't read it. And after he watched a couple of our videos, he knew what to fake on a stone ah. to get more money for it. He knew he knew how to put Helios on them, uh, which is the upside down V and the line line, which is read from right to left. That's our trademark, and that's that's what I use for a lot of my uh, yep t- uh, um, signature type anything I'm doing, putting online. Uh, concerning, excuse me, concerning this tomb, I used the Helios motif. So and he knew, he knew how to put the Yola uh, uh, Heifer symbol on stuff. He knew how to use the, the circle cross. He learned enough watching our videos to doctor up his tablets and say, hey man, yeah, this and here's Men of Tyre, uh, here's the Helios insignia, da 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 And he could get two or three hundred dollars more for that tablet. Because of what it had on it, and these people could not tell the difference of how he of how he faked them, of how he he inscribed it. They, they would just say, "Well, you know, it, they they didn't look at them. They looked at them with uh, from a distance, but they didn't examine them closely to determine what or not he had done. They they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. A lot of them were suckered because he was real good. He was good. So so yeah, I know that. Uh... You know, that's kind of what we came to the conclusion, that there was real stuff. But then in the end, you know, a lot of fake stuff started coming out. Um, or you know, stuff. He would take a good artifact and add stuff to it. Ah. He would add, add characters, like the guy that from Evergreen, Colorado. Yeah. Every stone he had had characters added on both ends of the script. Ah. So there's no way in hell the guy could have ever made him such a decipherment. Burroughs knew that he knew by watching our videos enough of the alphabetic characters to paint the stone enough to where nobody would ever would ever know how it would never make any sense at all. And he did it very very cleverly. He did it very very well. He did very good. So I know that you know you was trying to get in and find the tomb. We was trying to get in and find the tomb through Burroughs. Burroughs promised us he was going to take us in, and you told us it would never happen. And you're right, it never happened in the end. And he <laughs> said, years he's, ago, wasn't it? Yeah, like he, 20 years ago. Yeah, longer than that. Might have been longer than that. It was in the early yeah, 2000. Yeah. It was in the early 2000s. So yeah, 20 years ago. So <laughs> so so yeah, he he claimed that it. The, he turned it over to the university, and then he claimed that the tunnel collapsed, and the university wouldn't let anybody in. But but everything he claimed was out, and 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 we ran across the guy that uh, claimed that Burroughs did take him in there, and and Burroughs agreed to that that he did, and he said there was nothing in there but some some bodies and some clay jars with some, with some papyrus in them, and that's what we was interested in because that could be carbon dated. We could see what was going on there. And so in this tomb, do you still think there's a lot of stuff in? There's other chambers that he never got to, that there's a lot of other stuff? Or? Yeah, with the amount of, uh, of gold that he pulled out, he pulled out um, over over a ton of gold. And, af- and, and now, gold is very heavy, and to put some perspective over, uh, over it, a ton of gold is just over a, a half of a paper sack. You remember the old grocery yep, sacks? I yep. have a paper bag, just over half. And that's a ton of gold. And after you pull a ton of gold out on your belly or whatever, your, your back starts hurting you. You don't need more, you know? And, and, and I've got all these replicated pieces, which I'm going to be doing a video on them. I'm going to, I've got all these pieces. Burroughs had every, Burroughs and Jack Ward had every piece of gold that came out of there. They made an impression. They made a slug of it before they melted, before Burroughs had the actual gold melted down. I've even got somewhere around here the assay report of, of uh, Burroughs' uh, uh, gold pieces that he took to some assay office in Indiana or wherever. Really? And it was ancient, it was an ancient mixture. It wasn't a modern mixture. It wasn't twenty-four carat. It was like it was like twenty-one and a half carat or something. It was like or nineteen carat. It was like something that has not been done in centuries. Hmm. 
Hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't modern. Twenty two, twenty four, ten carat, fourteen carat. It was like it was like way out there, and 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 the mixture of of the uh, uh, of the analysis was it, the, the people that were analyzing it were like what, scratching their heads, going, "What the hell is this?" You know, I, I don't get the I, what, what where did this come from? And and then uh, and, and then the, the actual gold was sold off with some congressmen and senators from Indiana. Huh. Now, Forrest didn't use anybody from Illinois. He used, because he, he, uh, Jack Ward was, excuse me, had connections in Indiana, and uh, and that's where he went to uh, to sell the actual gold off. And they ended up with like several million dollars worth of gold. And Burroughs has never, I don't understand why, you know, I mean, well, he, 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 he did live a good life. He had his house, his house was paid for, he declared bankruptcy after I started busting him, me and Paul started busting him. But he still has two Honda 750s. He has one for him to ride, and one for anybody of his friends that would want to go, that he could take on a ride with him. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, he, he had two Honda 750s. Wow. I mean, back in the early 90s, <laughs> late 80s, early 90s, and um, and just the, the stories that uh, that came out with, uh, uh, for instance, like with Jackson Judge, he was there cataloging gold. And uh, he found a gold nugget, a gold artifact underneath one of the chairs, and brought it to him. And said, "Yeah, hey man, I found this under the chair. So much gold pieces, so many gold pieces. <laughs> they didn't know what all. Really? <laughs> oh well. Well, I hey, think man, there was. A gold piece. Oh, I think man, there well. was supposedly some some large statues that were were either plated with gold, or is is was that is that true? Or is that just something I heard? No, you heard it, and you heard it from. Um, Probably Arn Ufford. Now Arn Ufford, I believe he passed away recently. Yeah, yeah, he's passed away. And uh, and he was in there with a guy named John. He would not never tell me the guy named John, but the John that he knew from Missouri or or from wherever he was friends with moved to Australia and passed away before Arn Ufford. And Arn Ufford told me that there were statues in there, life size statues. And Burroughs told me that also. So I believe it. I believe it. And um, and I don't know if you've seen the, the letters from uh, uh, Arn Upper or my interview with him. My no, no, I interview. haven't. Uh, well, I'll send that to you. Uh, it's fascinating cause, because um, I had heard about it, and I said, okay, this is back in like 08, 09, I think, or so. And I said, I'm going to destroy this guy. I'm going to just, just rip him to shreds. He, say, he says he's been with Burroughs. He says he's been in Burroughs Cave. He's been in this tomb over here. Da, 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 da. I'm going to call him out. And I just like was floored his story and how he how he met Bur the how he met Burroughs in the first place. Huh. And, and he was at a spelunking convention in St. Louis. And this guy, this he said, this little wormy guy Burroughs was running around trying to find people, uh, uh, an engineer, mining engineer, who could teach him how to shore up uh, uh, an entrance to a cave, and this and that, and, and everything. And, and in Arn Ufford, he was, he was connected with the government in some way. He, I don't think he was actually, per se, a CIA agent, but he did teach CIA agents super high-tech uh, uh, martial arts. Mm. He was, okay, Arn Ufford had a, uh, a studio, a martial arts studio in Beijing, China, and also, I believe, Salt Lake City or Los Angeles or somewhere else. And that was part of his problem later in life is his knees were giving out on him. Okay, so, so anyway, he was connected with China. He had a, how many, how many people here in this country have a kung fu uh, 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 business or Kung Fu Training Center in Beijing, China. Yeah, well, obviously really. he had to be connected with the communists. Huh, yeah. But and, and 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 later on, after after uh, 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 I learned more about him, I I, I go, did a, a couple of Google searches, and I found a website where his students, some of them CIA, FBI, all these people that that were just hailing him revering him really? for his ability he in, he invented he invented the mantis style the praying mantis style of kung fu he invented it 
Huh. And he is on record the only guy. Okay, okay, you got rice paper. It's like real thin. It's like uh-huh. it's like a toilet paper, but it's like thinner and it's harder. This and, that. and there are some Shaolin priests and some Kung Fu priests that can walk across this rice paper without tearing it. Okay? Arn Ufford is the only person on record that could run full sprint across rice paper and not tear one little piece. Really? Yeah. I don't make it up, man. I don't have to make it up. The, the truth is hard enough to digest without having to make it up. <laughs> I, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, this guy's heavy duty. So then I called him back later and did another interview with him. <laughs> and I got that transcribed. I'll, I'll send them to you. Yeah. I, I never got to meet him, but I, I heard about him. You know, from Gary Taylor, I heard quite a bit about him, but I, I never never got to meet him. I never I, I, I never took the time. You know, life gets in the way. You know, work and all that, and, and so many people yeah, have passed. Well, see, I, I, I had, a, I, I had a, a, a consortium here together to where uh, uh, we could fly him out. I wanted to fly him out here. His story was tight enough, and I explained it to some of my supporters here. I said, let's fly this guy out here and see what he said. And, and um, and uh, I wanted to do it, and I had the money ready for that. I was going to pick him up in St. Louis or Indianapolis, wherever he wanted to fly into and bring him here. And uh, and, and uh, he just, ah, I can't leave my wife. My, I'm in bad health. My wife's in bad health. Da, 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 da. And how do you compete with that? Yep. You know, how do you yep. compete with that? You, you can't really. Yep. And, 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 and so that, um, that, that, that fell through the, the scenes. And then there was the other guy from from England. Uh, uh, what was that guy? The Partisan. Yeah, he, had, he Part- had had two different different handles. He went by. Yeah. Southern, Southern something. Southern and, Partisan or something. Yeah. And something he was else. full of mud. He, he he was just absolutely full of mud. So you, you don't he think just wanted he wanted a free trip to go to go visit his family? So no, sorry, dude. Uh, it ain't gonna happen. Huh. So and so anyway. But Arn Upper, he was straight up. I, I thought I thought that he was going to be a quack, but he wasn't. Man, he was straight up. He was straight, up and, and he didn't he didn't make up anything. He just told me how it was, and and uh, um, and and it was it was it was beyond believable. It, his story was just so complete, so concise from start to finish. He was articulate, and that's something that um, that you have to look for, especially when you're hunting ancient ancient tombs and. Southern Illinois. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look for articulation. <laughs> and um, but nonetheless, getting back to this tomb, yeah, uh, uh, um, Burroughs sold artifacts all over the world, and uh, there's the, these artifacts are in Asia, Europe, South America, Central America, North America, Canada. They're all over now, and and second hand, second hand. Uh, um, I had. 15 artifacts destroyed in a fire oh, along with uh, two coins, two ancient coins from North America that are were irreplaceable. Oh, terrible. Yeah. And and, and, and and the whole time trying to get somebody to put a museum together. And if there was a museum, I guarantee you there'd be a lot of artifacts in there. I yeah. mean, people would be donating their artifacts or selling their artifacts to the museum, however it would happen. And and I, I I hope that that happens before before I kick the bucket, but who knows? I'm I'm 62 now, and I'm not getting any younger, and I'm trying my best to just you know uh, uh, put out as much information as I can. But there's so much information that I have here, and you know and and, and like we just had these tornadoes that went through Kentucky and Edwardsville, Illinois. Edwardsville is like 70 miles away. Kentucky's like 100 miles away. What if it just came through here, swept through, and just all the paperwork, all the documentation that I've had, that I've accumulated uh, 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 from the 70s, 80s, 90s, if it just is all swept asunder? That, that, that would you know? be devastating, because as you are, Harry, you're kind of a national treasure yourself with all the stuff that you've collected, all the information... That, 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 that you have and all the research that you've done. Well, thank you. 
and, and it all led up to this tomb here in Illinois. Um, I, I, I don't think that I would have been interested that much interested in it had I not been collecting the ancient coins, had I not been into ancient languages, had I not been studying day and night the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, 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 reading the Bible in Greek, Hebrew, Latin, whatever, you know, and, and, um, and familiarizing myself with this and that, and studying Phoenician, uh, Punic. Uh, just uh, you know, just on and on. It kind of, it kind of was all some type of twisted synchronicity that I don't know how to explain. The, the good Lord has blessed me beyond belief. When I stand before the the, the big guy upstairs, I think he's going to judge me real harshly. <laughs> <laughs> I think when I stand before God, he's going to be like, why didn't you do this? Why did I have just got nothing but excuses, sir? I, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I have no excuse. Because when, you, when you're standing in front of the Creator, man, you, you, you don't want to hear your excuses. <laughs> he yeah. knows what they are already. Yeah. You know, so. Yep. And the big guy upstairs is a whole lot bigger than anybody down here can understand. So, is do you know is is Russell Burroughs is he still alive? As far as I know, uh, uh, I would I would suspect that if he croaked, he's got to be in his eighties, late eighties by now, or early nineties. Yep. Uh, last I heard, um, I'd have to call one of his relatives, I would suppose, or Wayne May. Um, he was in a wheelchair, ah, yeah. and he had to have uh, those. Um, Oh, those, um, he was in a wheelchair, but he had to have those, um, uh, what you call them, arm crutches, the crutches that, that, that attach to your arms yeah. to get up to use the bathroom or so, you uh, know? So, and, yeah, uh, it's the last I seen of him, you know, I talked to him a little bit after that, but the last I physically seen him was in 2004, but, uh, geez, what was I going to ask you? Uh, oh, so, so he tells the story, he told me the story of, of how, you know, people, the bad guys, found out that he had this cave with gold and these art, artifacts in it, and they came and tried to shoot him, and he got in a gun battle with them and killed them and all. Do you think those stories are true? And tell me them stories. No, no. Tell me them no, stories. No, 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 those are just yarns. But see, back then, back then in the 80s, uh, there was a fella. That uh, south of the property, like a, like a quarter of a mile south of Burroughs, uh, of this of this tomb here, he had a, uh, a a gun dealership, and he was a reloader, and he would go out and target shoot and and, and test out his uh, his ammunition, and and uh, uh, um, he did some time in the slammer because he shot at a an Avis an Avis delivery truck or something. You remember Avis? Yeah. Uh, they're not around him. And, and I believe that, that Burroughs heard him shooting off some of his, semi, uh, his automatic weapons, his, his machine guns, and, and, just, and just develop the story. Ah, out of okay. It. And, and so, because there's a lot of, the, of his stories that, that I, I, I came to find out later that there's an inspiration for that. There, there's, a, there's a key to that. There's a key to this. There's a key to that. And and, how, and all of his gun battles and stuff because there was a guy that was um, about a quarter of a mile, maybe three quarters, maybe almost half a mile, three eighths of a mile south of the tomb that uh, that was constantly, even when I came up here, he was constantly shooting off uh, automatic weapons and just make a make a story out of it. And yeah. then, and then uh, and, and and the the power line runs right through the property. Well. The, uh, after after major storms, the helicopter flies the the power line. Well, there's a helicopter, and then he hears the guy shooting in, in his in his backyard. Well, we'll just put that together. Hey, man, I, I'm hearing uh, yeah, the Israelis are, are in the helicopter, and and I got a guy shooting them at him. You know, you know, it, it, well, you know, a little a little imagination can go a long way when you when you're looking when you're looking for something. He, he he did have an imagination and 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 I know that uh, on our forum he told everybody he was like a colonel or a uh, somebody a general. yeah and, and and then somebody he was, he was, first of all he was colonel colonel Russell Burroughs and it was all bogus yeah somebody <laughs> he became brigadier general 
Yeah, somebody checked him out from the military. They came on our forum and checked him out and says, hey, whoa, this is... And so they started thinking whether we was part of his lie. They started checking us out because they was, they was going to get him for... And, and there, you know, that's the sad thing. There was, there was no reason for him to even tell that story that he was that. You know, he had a cool enough story with this with his cave, you know, with the artifacts that he found and, and why he even threw that in. It just blew my mind and, and that's kind of when I... I thought, well, I don't know about this guy anymore. If he's going to lie for something like that. After after we um, discovered his lie, he, he's listed in the Hall of Shame. <laughs> the Hall of Shame is um, people who uh, uh, go to pawn shops and buy purple hearts and put them on their own chest or their own coat and this and that. It's, the Hall of Shame is the shame of people who have usurped some kind of valor, some kind of military valor. And Burroughs uh, uh, claims that he was in the Delta Force of, of the, uh, uh, in the Korean War. And, as far as, and then somebody else comes up and says the Delta Force wasn't invented then. <laughs> you know, and, and the man has no shame. And that's what you have to realize. There's, there's nothing he will say or do that will cause him to, to relapse any kind of shame. He, he is a perpetual, pathetic, um, uh, pathogenic liar, and and um, uh, so a pathological liar, and 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 that's that's part of his deal. As part of his going crazy, insane over finding a bunch of artifacts in using treasure books, and he even he even uh, there was a the guy that uh, that was in high school. That told me he's he's a uh, therapist now, uh, medical therapist here locally, and he said that when he was a kid that there was a guy, and after he saw pictures of Burroughs, he said that's the guy, that's the guy that accosted us. They were fishing at one of the ponds close by the tomb site, and he said that uh, that this guy caught them on the way out. He was in a, a, a military khaki, and said. Uh, uh, what are you guys doing here? Uh, he goes, he goes, he, we thought, well, man, I, we're busted. We're busted. We're fishing in this pond over here that we didn't have permission to fish in. And this guy is, is really, he goes, well, there's, he, he, and this is what the guy remembered from the, uh, from his high school. The guy told him that, told him, his dad and his brother, that there's evidence that Alexander the Great had been here. There's evidence that Alexander the Great has been here. Huh. So Burroughs knew back in the late 80s, mid-late 80s, he knew. He knew who he had found. And this is before you, you and Paul, this is before you yeah. and Paul interpreted that. How, how do you think right. he knew that? Yeah, he knew. How do you think and he would I know that, that? When I showed that, to, when I played the tape back for Jackson Judge, Jackson Judge just busted out laughing. He knew! He knew who it was! Yeah, he did. And I recorded, I recorded the uh, the conversation with me and that guy. Huh? How do you think and, he? Uh, and I played it back for Jackson Judge. How do you think he knew? Was was there some kind of a telltale sign? Well, I mean, how could uh, uh, there he come was up a, um, with there that? Was, uh, exactly. There was the, the letter from uh, from uh, 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 Dr. Warren Cook oh, that said okay. that that, uh, that this possibly was something from uh, Numidia, uh, ancient Libya. Uh, a rogue, a rogue force, this and that, this and that. But all Burroughs had to do is he, if he found a gold sarcophagus, but there's not too many ancient kings that are buried in a solid gold sarcophagus. That's true. Not, you, you can count them on, on like one hand, one finger. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what Burroughs did. He knew enough to, to, to get by. I mean, he's, he's a low IQ guy. I mean, he's not he's not brilliant. He doesn't know any ancient languages. Uh, he doesn't know history. He just knew how to live. He just knew how to get in and out of that tomb uh, uh, in, in in the summertime and and uh, without getting caught. Yeah. So with, without with, being seen. With all of his all of his excursions happened at night. He never went out there during the daytime, except with uh, Virginia Oregon. And uh, Arn Ufford, and just maybe maybe a handful, a couple of other people. His his uh, brother-in-law, 
I can't even remember what his name is. His brother-in-law in, -law in uh, Alney maybe went out there. But all of his all of his uh, deeds were done at night. He knew his way around that the woods there like the back of his hand. Yeah. When he accosted me and my party in uh, what was that uh, November of 1994, he 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 went south of us and came up from from the south. He he went he went to the east. He hiked through the east and came up through the south. Okay, just the roads, the roads back then uh, uh, to travel on, they were not marked. You had to know where you were at. Otherwise, you'd get lost. Uh -huh. And he knew those woods like the back of his hand. Uh -huh. So with with uh, all the, the fraud and forgery that he did do, with the, with the you know, embellishing of truths and th stuff that he did do, you know, you and Paul are are confident, you know, that the early stuff that he brought out was actual, real, legit stuff. Yeah, 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 big time, big time. When I showed him our first tape, two tape three, and it came up. Uh, also, Boz Alexi Paleo, also known as Alexander the Great, Boros was in a chair. He shot up, and he was. And he put his hands in his face, and he put his face in his hands, and he goes, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. He was just start pacing. He started sweating bullets, man. And it was air conditioned. He started sweating bullets. And, he, and then this when he told me, he said, he said, this is what, he told me, he said that this is what uh, Warren, Dr. Warren Cook said. Really? Yeah. Well, just. But he already knew. He, he already, he, we believe now he already knew. We just confirmed it. Yeah. That well, now, 13 Crips, one of them had a woman that had had a couple of kids, and that's Cleopatra, and she's in there. And it's, it's, there's tablets. I show, I show her tablets. I show several of her tablets in, the, in, in Egyptian. Her name is there, Alexander the Great, plus, you know, but. Or he, he's not Alexander the Great. It's not Alexander Magnus. He's Arxantris. Uh, um, I, I, he's in there listed as Arxantris in the Egyptian in his hieroglyphic names. It's not Alexander the Great. And that's what the American scholars will... How, where does it say Alexander the Great? Yeah. <laughs> we get a kick out of the American scholars. Man, they're just <laughs> stupid as hell. And and, um, and a lot of them have passed on now. If it doesn't say Alexander V, it has to have T-A-G, great, right, in it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, and it's got to be written in the English syntax. It's got to be written in the book where they can where they can read it. Well, yeah, uh, that's what that's what that says, man, Alexander the Great. No, it doesn't. <laughs> our our, our Xantress, Mary Alman, uh, uh, Septipa, and Ra, you know, um, you know, um, it slips them right now. I'm not prepared to, but I, I've got it on videos. You know, there's a lot to have. Yeah. There's a lot to have to remember. <laughs> hey, man, and you you remember a lot, man. <laughs> well, I, I, there's a lot that I forget too. I mean, I, unless I brush up on it. So I can just imagine, you know, exploring, finding a cave, and breaking into something like he did. You know, um, I I just can't imagine how you would even think. You know the awe of what you just found, but but the sad part of it is is that uh, you know he looted it. But but the, another sad part of it is is whether he looted it or not, um, our the academia would have said it was a fraud no matter what. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to weigh you have to weigh what happened with what could have happened, or what should have happened, or what might have happened. Yeah. And and all the scenarios suck. They they're all. Terrible. Uh, yep. if, if, if you put the Smithsonian on it, they would have hit it. They would have, they would have conjured up some, uh, oh, it's just Venetian pirates. Yep. And that's what it did. As soon as we came out and it was Alexander the Great, uh, Burroughs started doing interviews with everybody saying it's Venetian pirates. It's not Alexander, it's just Venetian pirates. Well, hello, Venetian pirates? Where do you get that from? <laughs> Where do you get that from? Uh, oh, oh, Venetian pirates in Marion County, Illinois. Thank you, Burroughs. Thank you, Burroughs. Uh, we appreciate that. <laughs> and and he told on himself so many times, and and the, and the stones were busting him too, and that's why he, he cut he cut us off. Uh, in 1994. Uh 
Ah. Yeah, 1994. And then, uh, and then in uh, 1995, uh, um, same thing. Oh, it's, it's, I turned it over to a university. Uh, they're going to do it. Da, 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 da. I mean, I mean, and, and, and Wayne May believed him. Uh, you know, Asian American Magazine believed him every time. Every time. Every time he said that he's turned it over to a university. Uh, yeah, man, he's turned it over to a university. And I remember one of uh, Wayne May's uh, uh, counterparts go, hey, man, we know who owns it. It's Benito Costello. <laughs> you know Benito Costello. <laughs> we know the name of the guy who owns the property. There ain't no Benito Costello here. And then uh, he was telling people that we were 10 miles off, uh, uh, um, 50 miles off, this and that, and this and that. And, and, then, uh, and, then, he, and then he told uh, what Dr. Shears, he goes, uh, yeah, yeah, they, uh, they're right there on top of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, it's just been so much back and forth through the years. It's, it's, it, if you didn't have a sense of humor, I think you'd probably go crazy. And oh, Burns I agree doesn't have with a sense you. of humor, so he is crazy. He's nuts. I, I, I agree with you 100%. Well, Harry, you got anything else you want to add to this? Yeah, let's do another interview soon. Definitely, I want another interview soon. So, so it's and back. And we'll do another one, and I'm going to be putting out some more videos. Um, um, you go to Harry Hubbard uh, YouTube. I do have a, 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 an old website called IllinoisCage.com, um, which has my email address, and you can you can find my email address on the YouTube too, and in, in, in the about section. Anybody wants to email me, and you can make comments on. Uh, on the on the, the 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 YouTube videos, I try to answer uh, comments and back and forth. I just recently had to crush a guy that was um, uh, doing um, a charlatan peddling fake um, petrified hearts, and he challenged me and uh, Frank Aon, our forensic guy that you've known for a couple of decades, and um, and I had to I had to crush him again, and. Um, and and so, uh, uh, but I'm going to be putting out some more stuff real soon, and it's just, and then it's just going to come boom, 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 boom. I'm going to be cutting so many videos, and just spitting them right out, and and uh, and and they're just all going to be fascinating. The stuff you will not see anywhere else on 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 the on the internet. You're not going to the channel here that me and Paul have done. Um, you're not going to find any other channel on YouTube that does this. The same way with you. I mean, you have a lot of stuff that nobody else has got. Oh well, yeah, but and, it's nothing like yours. Yours is in-depth, deep, interesting things, man. I can't wait to see what you put out. <laughs> well, I I can't wait to put it out. And and uh, but I, I like watching your stuff. I do get notifications. Uh, I've been shadow banned so heavily for years now on on uh, on YouTube and. And uh, uh, it just it just comes with the territory, man. It just comes with the territory. Yeah. Well, with that said, Harry, man, I appreciate you and thank you, and that's a wrap. All right. Peace out, brother. God bless. Mm -hmm.